Here we are with Evan. Uh, Evan Chang is a co-founder and CEO of Mistin Labs, which develops the SUI blockchain. Evan, thank you so much for joining me here at the Define Podcast. Welcome. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Great. Um, well, uh, excited to have you here. Uh, Sui has really kind of broken through the noise this year. Um, of course, there's uh, many uh, different layer one chains, um, uh, but you know the Sui uh, TVL and token have has you know really taken off, uh, surpassing uh, many other layer ones recently. Um, so I'm excited to hear. Uh, what makes Sui uh, different, the, the founding story, what kind of um, uh, development uh, and use cases you're seeing on the chain, all of that stuff. Uh, so let's start at the beginning. I'd love to hear um, first um, your your own background um, and then what led you to, uh, to start Sui. Uh, yes, uh, so I've been in tech for I think about 26 years now. Uh, I spent 10 years at Apple, uh, built some of the very core technology that, that power software and, and many hardware devices, um, you know, across the world. Uh, pretty much my software is, is a foundation on every smart device out there on iPhones and Android phones. Everybody uses my software. Uh, you probably heard Solana also use LVM, which is, you know, my, my main work, uh, back at Apple days. So, uh, I've always been very interested in kind of developer, uh, platforms or, or tooling for them, programming language, all those areas. Um, my interest has always been some more foundational. Technology that that have a lot of kind of a you know deliver a lot of impacts to developers. Um, so that's probably you know th that's relevant because that's my view of, about blockchain as well. Uh, these are ultimately uh, developer platform that empower developer to build new type of applications and products. That's less. It's very very different than what we are used to today. Um, you know these days. You know, if you're using any of the, you know, platforms, TikTok, uh, Insta Instagram, you name it, it's, it's sort of a custodial model, right? You, each one of these is, is a silo. You basically are sort of giving them permission to sort of use your information, use your, your assets. Uh, um, you know, in the future, we believe uh, the, it's going to be a more dis less decentralized world where, you know, applications can sort of coordinate among themselves and the coordination is done through the the consumer themselves having complete control, uh, you know, of the assets and the information they can sort of give permission, right? So if you understand that model, sort of you understand, you know, kind of what we're building towards. Uh, and that's a lot where I came from. Um, probably, you know, I, I work at Apple, then followed by my time at Facebook. It's always about you know, sort of at the forefront of uh, developer experience, uh, tooling, language, everything. And, and and I work at this company that's very, very much the the leader of the current, you know, centralized Web2 world, right? They, they know how to serve their developer. They know how to serve the customer. But it's a, it's a model that, you know, in, in my view, I have always feel like society will, will demand a different model. Uh, the, the social trend will, will want something with consumer more in control. Uh, not saying one is right or wrong, but that's just how things tend to shift from one end to another. We, we go from highly decentralized or peer-to-peer -peer internet back when it started to, to more centralized model, custody of information, uh, make things more convenient. Uh, the having networking effect, network effect means it's, it's more efficient in distribution of content or information that has a lot of positive about it, but it's also a lot of downside. So we're going to see this shift. So, um, you know, for me, I, I want to always want to do something about it. I want to help build that developer infrastructure, the platform that empower this new type of application. And I believe that's, that's the, 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 the great opportunity, uh, in the, in the, in the coming decades, uh, so, so that's sort of a lot of my, my background. Um, so obviously at Facebook was 
uh, kind of running R and D for the Libra project, uh, and that was exciting uh, period of time. Learned a lot. We built a lot. Um, we also somewhat left unsatisfied uh, because it wasn't, you know, in hindsight we felt like it was more of a product for Facebook and less of a platform. And part of it is is, is just you know the 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 scale of uh, Facebook and and you know sort of. Uh, incorporating feedback of uh, sort of the government's regulators. Part is we just didn't quite understand. Um, you know, so giving example, uh, we were talking about financial inclusion, and even for financial inclusion, we're thinking about uh, the government having opportunity to potentially reaching millions of their citizens. You know, through some kind of, you know, sending them money. Uh, you know, G two, you know, C, and we learned how difficult it is to. You know, using blockchain to, you know, it's insufficient. You know, it's, it's it's one thing to to be able to, you know, if there's already that direct connection, it's much easier. But given you, you know, that that bootstrapping the onboarding experience is very difficult. The difficulty of having all those uh, assets living on chain at one time, uh, you have to deal with all the complexity storing things on chain. We, we learned a lot, right? Those things are turned out having a traditional blockchain was insufficient uh, to solve this kind of problem. So when the opportunity came up, came along for my co-founder and I to start missing lab, we just took the chance and we said, okay, let's take our learning um, and, and let's build something very, very different and with this uh, sort of, you know, asset centric uh, view in mind. Super, super interesting stuff. I, I want to touch on a, a couple of points that you made. Uh, the first is just uh, how, um, you know, remarkable it is that you were at developing for Probably, you know, the, 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 um, the epitome of centralized web two, right? Like <laughs> yes. Apple is, is known to be very centralized, very much a closed garden, probably the most closed ecosystem there is. So pretty much opposite to blockchains. Um, and then Facebook, obviously, you know, it's, it's, uh, together with, with Google and, and Amazon, you know, the the reason why web2 is so centralized um so yeah i think it's it's um it's just a very i don't know funny i guess that you you came from from these companies right. and then you know uh, learned about blockchain inside of facebook now meta um and just you know wanted to uh after you know libra didn't pan out and um, you were inspired enough by this vision that you went off and, and wanted to start uh, your, your own blockchain. Um, I think that's just a, a really interesting path. I'm 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 curious to hear your thoughts because you were so so much at the core of Web two. Um, you know what what about this system? You think um, should be uh, changed? I mean, why why do you think this system no longer works for society currently? and that uh, a new kind of blockchain-based Web3 would be better? Yeah, I mean, like anything, right? So a technology paradigm shifts over time. And, 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 and why it must change? Well, it, it's getting to the point it's very hard for um, new players to challenge the, the established players. Mm. It's getting harder and harder. Right, we've seen this, the the fantastic what a five these days. They get bigger and bigger. Right, these companies are keep on have accumulated more power. It's harder to crack. Uh, it's compete. Right, when there's less competition, it's generally bad for consumer uh, because you're stuck. Uh, and and I think some of the potential downsides are. Uh, hard to quantify, right? When a uh, policy changes, such as Apple, with a privacy policy change uh, doesn't allow cross app, you know, tracking. Probably good, intention is good, but there's probably you know, and probably do some good for for consumer, but for advertising becomes uh, you know, for advertisers it becomes a big challenge, right? All of a sudden, you you don't un understand how to target your. Um, you know how to target your ads, and the cost of 
uh, you know, acquiring customer increases, and that will have downsides, um, you know, impact on small, medium businesses, right? These things are very hard to quantify. It's not right and wrong. It's just sort of general trend, right? Once you get to max centralization, it's inevitable there is going to be a push to the other direction. And, and couple that with a general distrust in institution. And I think this is something we can all agree, right? The world is getting to the point where it's, that trust is not there anymore. So those combination, you know, creates an opportunity, right? You, you, you kind of can't trust big institution, big companies. At the same time, you are sort of almost powerless. You have to use them because they are everywhere. You rely on them so much and, and, you know, in, in general, people will seek alternative. And and what we're seeing with the younger generation, with some more of the progressive, um, you know, kind of builders, they, they want to have more, be their own boss, right? They, uh, the rise of the creative economy. People want to have more control of their destiny. Uh, they don't want to work for a big company. And, and that's definitely a trend. Uh, even, you know, a lot of other, you know, what we're seeing in fashion, you are collaboration across different company, different brands, mixing of IPs is something people are definitely interested in, right? Because it's unique, right? If you can build something that's uniquely represents uh, even the, the customers or the artists, right? That That's powerful. Um, yeah, so so the, those those so, so social trends and and just the the need for competitive advantage is a reason why we're we're talking about decentralized applications, um, and 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 I think we believe this trend will continue, will gather momentum. Yeah, awesome. Um, and then um, the other question I wanted to ask um, from your background is what you mentioned. The, you took you want you took the lessons from Libra to build Sui. So, what are the main lessons that you took away from from that experience? Yeah. So, so first of all, the the developer experience with blockchains were suboptimal. We, you know, the when you're thinking of you know, I think if you think from first principle, you understand a public blockchain like Sui is 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 for coordination. Right, uh, and coordination through assets. If you know you, you lo- want to allow developer and consumer to say, "This is my asset that lives on chain," and I coordinate, I can coordinate, you know, the, between multiple services. Say, "Okay, you get to use my information here. You use my information, but I, I, I own my identity. I own my asset." Then you realize the developer model, the 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 so the programming model of the blockchains doesn't really map it well. Um, and that's the fundamental driver of our understanding of what we want to do. Um, and knowing that we, we realize, you know, we want to have assets as the first class citizen on the blockchain. And we kind of have a concept how to take, understanding how to take the move programming language which, which we designed and build at, at Facebook. How do we change that model? Um, to fit fit what we want, but then we run into other difficulty with the blockchain. Uh, you know, it's a, how you store data uh, is one problem. Uh, you probably know before Sui, all the blockchain implementation in what they can the on chain data. You know, the the amount of information data they can store on chain it's very very expensive. There's some redundancy. There's some bad. Uh, kind of design there that sort of carry on from earlier days that that makes that very limited. And that's very, very fundamental because you, if you think about it, we're going into the world where uh, humans are constantly interacting with software, right? You have an asset, you, you are basically empowering software to manage it for you, you know, in some way. And pretty soon we're going to probably going to see software just have an interaction as well. Um, so, these things are intelligent. These assets are intelligent. They're almost like autonomous in some way, making decisions or incorporate you know, changes over time. And you need to empower it. If you are saying I'm holding all the information that is necessary that describe what an asset is off chain, you, you're fundamentally limiting what it can do. Right, and and you're basically reintroducing human in the loop. You're reintroducing centralization in the loop. Right, you're going away from from the decentralized application model. So 
uh, once we understand all these, it's just okay. Now we understand we need to build something and have somewhat very different requirement from all the blockchain that 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 lived before. Okay, let's let's go actually design it from from the ground up and and see what we can come up with. And the result was three. Interesting, and, and that's a, a a great segue to um, the next question I have, which is uh, with so many layer one blockchains, you know what makes SUI special? Like what makes it uh, different, especially with um, uh, comparing to to Aptos, which you know, I mentioned that uh, we recently had uh, their co-founder on the podcast and, you know, there's very similarities between you two. You're both using Move. Uh, uh, you both came from the, you know, Facebook Libra uh, experience. So, yeah, what what makes you guys special compared to Aptos and like to other to all the other layer ones? Yeah, I mean, as I alluded to earlier, we want to have a very different model. Uh, it's an asset-centric blockchain uh, because we believe what we want is a you know sort of frictionless global uh, coordination uh, that through intelligent asset, right? What what I mean by intelligent assets is assets um, can make decisions themselves, can enforce rules around them. Uh, so, so the the model is very different. The programming model, the data model, everything is very different, um, and the that that doesn't really work well in in a sort of the, the classic um, kind of you know layer one model in terms of how they program. Um, you know, so so everything is very very different from from that point on. Um, we also, you know, and we talk about the, the ability to store uh, information on chain and every asset is an object uh, with full encapsulation and you can compose assets, right? So that's another aspect is very different about SWE. Uh, while everybody is talking about composability, alluding to the ability for protocols to interact with other protocols, uh, you know, composing them as a chain. Uh, you also have to, we have to also think about asset composability, right? If you think about in the real world, um, everything is composable. I have this glass uh, that has water, right? This, these are two actually assets composed into one. An empty glass with water, these are two assets composed into one. And if you model everything in the world, that that's that's this that's how the world works as well uh to enable that all that we we have just fundamentally a very different data model and the tr transaction processing pipeline even the move programming language is quite different because of that uh, also in terms of uh transaction while well, everybody's sort of talking about what well, we need to you know focus a lot on scalability we're saying scalability should be you know table stick right if you want to use uh, infrastructure uh, at a global scale, uh, you need to basically ensure um, you never run out capacity, right? Don't talk about scalability, talk about elasticity, meaning if you have increased demand, you have increased supply to meet that. And then you have predictability in terms of cost, right? So it's a lot of different design principle. Um, so if, yes, people confuse us with Aptos all the time. Uh, the, the difference is very, very clear. Aptos is based on DN core. Uh, which is open source by by Facebook, the Libra project. We built everything from the ground up. Uh, we designed the move language. We designed different variant of move language using this more sort of asset centric. Uh, in the programming language terms, it's more object oriented, like uh, you know, you know, with some functional aspects as well. So every aspect is basically redesigned uh, from the ground up. And we also focus a lot on the layers above a blockchain. All the primitives allow solving problems around uh, kind of a onboarding experience, you know, the ease of creating assets that can enforce rules. Um, you know, th these things are very important. Uh, you're probably aware the 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 you know the the story about NFTs, right? The marketplace decided to drop enforcement of royalty. That's an example where you um, Essentially, humans corrupt the intention of software. The software was designed with the intention of delivering royalty payments, but human, which is the marketplace, decide to drop that for their own benefit. We're about creating a platform that allow the asset to be intelligent, where 
these rules, once it's baked in, they cannot be circumvented by human. Mm. Right. So all these things are very, very different. Ready to dive into the world of on-chain derivatives? Sin Futures is your decentralized portal to trading futures and perps with up to 100x leverage. Now live on Blast Mainnet, Sin Futures V3 combines limit orders and concentrated liquidity into a single unified liquidity model dubbed Oyster AMM, offering unparalleled capital efficiency. Earn triple airdrop rewards through an incentive program designed around Blast and Sin Future points. And join the new Trading Grand Prix competition to win a piece of the $500,000 prize pool. Visit sinfutures.com, that's S Y N futures.com, to start your decentralized trading journey today. When you talk about an asset centric blockchain and storing assets on chain, um, I mean, I understand all blockchains do this, right? Like, that's what uh, chains are about, you know, like having at least like a native token and having that be a, a part of the economic system of how the, the chain works. So can you explain a little bit more about, you know, like w in practice, how, what does being an asset centric blockchain mean? Like what, what can you do that you can't do uh, yeah. on other chains? Uh, blockchain actually store the transaction records on chain. Okay. Uh, a lot of information, the data about the underlying asset actually don't necessarily live on chain. NFT, ERC721 is an example of this. In most cases, you store the JPEG off chain on some other right. you know, storage so mechanism. Cases, right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for cost saving reasons. Uh, but think about beyond that, right? Um, you know, you know, all these all these standards basically keep very, very little information on chain. And the the mm -hmm. information also sometimes are hard to mutate them. Uh, because it's, uh, again, very costly. So this is like one fundamental understanding here is uh, what makes an asset is not just the JPEG, right? It's about mm -hmm. all the information that's relevant to it. Uh, how much you want to, and uh, what about the rules around them? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so for, for SWE, you can basically store arbitrary amount of information on chain. If you want to describe, say, a, a JPEG, you know, not JPEG, a RPG game, right? you're probably familiar with it. A hero has all this information about them, their uh, their their race, their you know, and their maybe their intelligence, their their strengths, and you know, the his you know the, the experience point. These are assets. These are information that makes that asset uh, together, and and we want to empower these things to be stored on chain, they can be mutated on chain, they can be composed. A hero acquiring a magic sword, all of a sudden you're composing two assets together. So these things are really not easily doable with other blockchains uh, because the the programming model, because the data model, and also because of the cost that's mm -hmm. associated with storing information on chain. I see, okay, so the big difference is that SUI makes it mm -hmm. I guess cheaper, easier to store uh, arbitrary am arbitrary amounts of information about an asset on chain, so um, that you know gives more predictability uh, to how these assets works uh, and makes them more composable. And make them composable is a big part of it, um, and uh, you know also enforcing rules is a, other parts of it. We mm -hmm. have created a kiosk uh, standard that you can imagine sort of like a kiosk you see in a shopping mall, right? You put things there uh, and if you buy it off of it, then you automatically, the royalty payments are guaranteed, handled by the software, by smart contract. You don't have to rely on marketplace to decide whether you enforce the rules or not. Uh, same thing with uh, a closed circuit standard, coin standard that allows restrictions, right? The way you think about it is a like permission permission asset on top of a permissionless uh, mm -hmm. platform. So there's a lot of, you know, sort of, you know, differences, um, you know, in, in, yes, in theory, you can build everything on any kind of programming language platform, uh, programming platform, but if your platform doesn't, isn't sort of designed to support that model, it's going to make things very, very difficult. And that's one of the main 
uh, kind of a design criteria when we when we design the suite. Interesting. Okay, and then hopefully without getting too technical, but um, is the the main reason why this is possible or easier on Sui, is it because you're using this modified version of the move language or is there also, you know, aspects of your consensus mechanism or like other things involved in, in making this feasible? Uh, the first most important thing is the data model. Uh, so basically how you store this information on the blockchain. Uh, so, you know, the most of blockchains sort of have don't have a good separation between the transaction records as well as the data they store. Okay. So everything is kept on, um, you know, everything is sort of have a massive amount of overhead when you store on on, on the blockchain. Uh, for us, the data model is, you know, this is not a blockchain where you think about in terms of uh, smart contracts and, and, and sort of this kind of a file-based uh, data model. Um, you know, address, you know, address based model. Each of the objects is distinct. Uh, basically, it's a global s sort of a database of all these objects, each one representing an asset uh, that allow us to use conventional means to scale storage on chain. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying not to go to, into all the details here, uh, but by every aspect of the, the processing pipeline, uh, going through consensus and execution, and also storing uh, the re resulting state changes on on chain. How we store handle uh, the the data, the storage that's associated with the assets are all c completely different. Uh, you know, you know, some is you know the, the a system, a complex system like this, every aspect has to sort of support each other. You mm -hmm. kind of want to uh, leverage the the characteristic of each of the different components to so they work well, you know, harmoniously. Yeah, makes sense. And so, because of all, all of these objects, objects are distinct. Um, would SWE be classified as a modular chain? You know, there's like this. <laughs> big trend <laughs> yes. about modular chains. I don't know if like so it would be a part of that. Uh, every piece of large scale software should be modular by design. And I think modular chains are more of a design to be used, you know, each one as a component, uh, that, you know, but for us, right, our belief is, you know, you, you, it's a for different target audience, right? So modular okay. chains are used for other infrastructure builder to sort of taking uh, data availability part, taking uh, different consensus module, all these things to create their own chain. Uh, you know, we are targeting developers that want to build applications, right? So, so the way we think about it is very, very, very different. Um, you know, we'll see, right? We believe we can achieve uh, scalability, right? Uh, and a lot of modular, sort of the theory behind, thesis behind the modular uh, blockchain is that's the way you scale uh, blockchain. We fundamentally don't believe that. Uh, mm. We believe we have architecture that actually can scale without any any issue whatsoever. You don't want to um, kind of present so much complexity to a developer that should just be focusing on building applications. Mm, I see. No, it's... it's uh... Uh, definitely a valid uh, viewpoint. Um, and speaking of building applications, uh, recently the Sweet TVL total value logged uh, crossed 500 million. So yeah, uh, interested in what are the applications and use cases that's driving this growth? Um, and the DeFi ecosystem is definitely taking off. Uh, mm -hmm. If you pay attention to the numbers, right, it's, it's you know, recent weeks is between 550 and 600, and we'll probably get back there above 600 very soon. Um, you know, the reason why, the, and, and the, the, the number you actually should look at, apart from TVL, is the transaction volume. Uh, mm. So our transaction volume was actually uh, leading the TVL growth and it was in the top 10 overall chance a mm. while ago. Um, and that means it's a healthy DeFi ecosystem um, because you can actually fake TVO rather rather mm -hmm. easily by by putting a lot of you know sort of assets into protocols and, and but 
you know, placing outside the range to be used. What we want to see is healthy growth in TVL and healthy growth in transaction volume. And both those are happening. Uh, and the reason is, well, guess what? You know, we have builders are building better products and traders are using these DeFi protocols to make more money. Uh, you know, it's uh, with some of our features that Sui has a uh, program transaction block. You can basically chain about a lot of, trans, you know, sort of, you know, ac activities together into one, you know, atomic block. And you ex execute and iterate on them without writing smart contract, right? You can do it on the client side. So people are figuring out how to sort of do this composability at a DeFi protocol level. Uh, and, and that allows them to do like some pretty, pretty powerful thing. Uh, we had one day, we still don't know who did it. Uh, there was some one bar that did 400 million transaction volume in one day. Um, probably somebody wow. just tested out writing some of these, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of bots uh, mm -hmm. to do that. So these are the reasons, you know, so when you see something that's growing healthy, uh, like, like the sweet DeFi ecosystem, it's because Usually the reason behind it is simple. People are building, develop are building better product and the users are making more money or getting better experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another project called Bluefin uh, that's not part of the TVL because it's a derivative platform and they also like up there in terms of overall trans daily transaction volume. Uh, I think it's in the top five among the, some of the most, you know, well, most used uh, protocols out there got it okay so it's 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 mostly uh finance like DeFi related apps that's driving this like the yeah well tbl is mostly de uh, driven by right. those yeah uh mm -hmm. other other you know DeFi is definitely the first one on sui to sort of cross that chasm to mm -hmm. to be sort of a rich product market fit and, and scoring healthy healthily uh and other you know kind of vertical other kind of applications are uh us are catching up as well. Yeah. Um, interested to hear more about uh, these uh, these experiments. I guess you said uh, DeFi developers are are building on Sui. Like uh, you mentioned something about using kind of this composability aspect to make some you know interesting applications. Like, can you give me a, um, yeah. a couple of examples? Yeah, so, so uh, I mean, obviously composability, especially in DeFi has been talked about for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, and if you ever use these uh, protocols, you also know a lot of times limited, right? To be composable, they kind of have to agree on some kind of common standard, have some agreement uh, between them for, for them to follow same standard to be used as, you know, together. Uh, so we allow permissionless composability at both asset level, but also at the protocol level, uh, so because the program transaction block allow you to chain these things together. And so long as you can, you know, enough of the protocols functionality are exposed, you can just sort of do it without their permission, right? That's the whole point of permissionless. Uh, you, you know, so, so that is very, very powerful and developer experimenting how we, you know, do these things or do some kind of a, you know, flash loan type of, you know, kind of bots is, is a very common thing. But what we're seeing is, you know, they really don't need to coordinate too much ahead of time, um, you know, to, to enable this happening. And also the possibility of doing this, composing this transaction into a, into a block on the client side without you need to write a smart contract, without need to generate uh, move code is, is a very, very powerful uh, feature that you know, other platforms don't, don't, don't support quite as well as we. Do you think that the fact that you're using move, will that be a um, limitation for existing DeFi apps on, in, in other blockchains, say on Ethereum or Solana or like other popular ecosystems for them to also deploy on Sui because we'll have to kind of build things over again. Uh, no, no, we're we're not really seeing that. Yes, it it is easier to say taking existing uh, Solidity Co and and fork it on another EVN chain, but um, you know that over time just fragments uh, your liquidity because you have a lot of duplication of the, essentially the same protocol mm -hmm. on all these chains that they're not really 
easily interoperable. In theory, you could, but in reality, each of the L L2 are sort of separate, for example. Uh, and what we're hearing from the developer is a love move. Um, then uh, we, we believe, for example, uh, Sri Lim, uh, they, they came from Solana, right? Solana, it's one of the biggest lending protocol there. They came over three that they have come out and say, you know, because it's, you know, uh, on Solana using Rust is, is kind of like chewing glass. On Sri is like chewing puree. Uh, puree. It's, it's a very different experience. It's 10x better. Uh, they say that developer experience. So, Yes, there is a learning curve initially, but once you overcome that learning curve, uh, the productive productivities of developers are actually much higher. And, and we think this is healthy because this allows them to build better products rather than mm. forking existing product and maybe tweaking it. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, maybe, yeah, it's, it, it, um, it takes a bit longer to do, but potentially the, the products that do get built are, mo are more original because they're done with a bit more intention than just creating a fork. Speaking of DeFi more broadly, uh, you know, you, you, you talked about how people are using these DeFi apps um, to make money. Uh, and, you know, it's something that I've been watching and, and waiting for, for it to happen that DeFi connects more with just like the productive world. Like, I don't know, People will say kind of their real world, but I think blockchains are very much real, but <laughs> call it just like the productive everyday economy of, you know, just like earning a salary, taking a loan, taking, getting mm -hmm. a, a loan to, you know, to, uh, you know, invest in your business or to buy a house mm -hmm. and not to like take leverage to buy more crypto. Right. Uh, so what do you think is missing for uh, DeFi to actually make that jump? Yeah. So, so. You know, uh, we think, you know, sort of finance world in, in sort of three category broadly. There's an on-chain finance that's we call DeFi, mm -hmm. um, where everything's on-chain, right? But there is a lot of friction for consumer because you have to essentially tokenize your asset, your fiat money into stable coin or other tokens, and then you can interact with the DeFi protocol. And there's other frictions on, you know, how do you get on board it? Right. Do you need to acquire tokens to to deal with gas? You know, you have to deal with wallets and all that. It's fairly uh, non-intuitive to a lot of normies, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, then what we want to do is consumer finance, right? How do you use these technologies to empower consumer finance? And then finally, in the future, you know, maybe the more institution finance will utilize blockchain as well rather than doing it in so, sort of private chains or permission chain as some they're do, doing right now. All are moving, all are still you know, having a lot of limitations. Uh, so the things we've done is we're solving a lot of onboarding uh, kind of issues with ZK logging, uh, allow you to sign, you know, not just sign in and sign on, but allow you to utilize uh, a, a application with your social logging and, and basically manage your, you know, kind of a, your credential in a way that's more familiar to normal people, but still maintain the privacy, still maintain the, uh, the self-custodial uh, sort of, you know, model. And that's, mm -hmm. that's crucial. Um, so, and have a uh, sponsored transaction means you can jump into using uh, these protocols without, potentially without dealing with gas, right? If you ever downloading a mobile app, you understand this, right? You don't, you don't have to say, okay, do I, do I have some changes here to, to pay for gas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or some kind of cost in using this app. So uh, we have built the primitives and the, uh, product builders are taking advantage of those and it's somewhat different kind of experience. Uh, consumer finance is sort of next sort of for frontier uh, for, for using blockchain. And if you think about cross-border payments, uh, we know there are people benefiting from having stable coin mm -hmm. um, and use, using it in, as a replacement for kind of the traditional cross pay. Uh, border payment uh, solutions, uh, but you still have the friction of uh, on-ramp and off-ramp, right? These things, again, needs to be solved. Um, 
And also in emerging market, you if you want to say, you can imagine some kind of point of sales, uh, kind of transaction, consumer paying for something. Mm -hmm. What if you have bad connectivity, right? And you mentioned one thing we, we talked about mm -hmm. is uh, forecast, you know, you know, we, we sort of like talk about like internetless uh, transactions. This is why these sort of technology are, are very, very crucial. Um, so uh, basically we, it's, it's solving all these uh, friction at the edges. Uh, what's, what is going to require uh, to empower the next generation of consumer finance products. And we believe we have a lot of solution there and do so in a way that's still regulatory compliant. That's going mm -hmm. to be important. Um, still, you know, uh, safe and secure. Um, these are sort of table stakes. You, you, we cannot afford to have more large scale uh, hacks and other kinds of issues that that sort of scare people away from from utilizing blockchains. Mm -hmm. So, for for you, do you think it's it's mostly a um, UX UI problem? Well, uh, people think about it's a UX UI problem, but it's much more than skin deep, right? If you think mm -hmm. in UX, it's sort of external facing. <laughs> To solve these kind of problem without reintroducing centralization is a big part. I, again, I use the NFT secondary sales uh, as an example. Well, that was an example of reintroducing centralization because the marketplace was centralization mm. agent here, and they can decide, you know what, I, I'm not going to enforce royalty payment because that increases the transaction volume is good for me. Anytime you take that very, very easy solution, say by reintroducing central, you know, centralization that you lose, something bad happens. And we saw what happens in the last cycle. A lot of these sort of uh, application that aggregating sort of front end to DeFi allow people to put that money in, uh, in, in like Voyager as one example. Right, uh, and take that money and then deploy in DeFi protocol and supposed to, uh, you know, pass the yield back to the consumer. Turns out they didn't really take the money and do what they supposed to do. They put it in lots and lots of risky um, kind of products and the whole thing fell apart. Uh, mm -hmm. So solving these kind of problems actually take very, very deep technology solutions. Um, and, 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 and it's not as simple as say just UX. Um, you know, you know, Apple is right. famous for this, right? They, they are, mm. their product are seamless, you know, gray use feels like butter is because everything is built, you know, to support that function, support that possibility. Right. It's like, okay, um, the, the user sees a better, better experience, but that's because there, there's a lot of technical work, deep work behind it that allows that to happen. Right, right. Right. Yeah. You know, think about it, right? When they, you know, pretty soon we're going to demonstrate internetless transaction, uh, maybe go, go out in the middle of nowhere. You can imagine um, maybe you can play a Pokemon type of game in a place where there's no internet. You can capture that Pokemon and that's on block on the blockchain. Or you can do a point sales payment without great connection. That's really That cool. would seem like a UX problem. But mm -hmm. uh, solution, but it's deep technology underneath it. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you think that with you know it, Bitcoin crossing its previous all-time high very recently, uh, it it really does seem like we're starting a, a new bull market. Um, do you think it's these these types of applications? what will be be driving the next bull? Like, do you think it will be DeFi focused? Last bull run, it was all about NFTs. Like, what do you think is going to bring in the, the next wave of users? Yeah, I think uh, in a bull market, everything goes. You know, mm -hmm. we, we're seeing that in the past. Um, I, I, it, it, you know, I, I, think, I think the way we are thinking about it is um, how do you get beyond this 
bow and bust cycle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you see this happening all the time. Bull market get more users to come in. That's great. People are making money, speculation, and they stick around for a while until a bear market and you see the, the users drop. Uh, the, not even the token price drop, you see the user drop. How do we overcome that? Uh, if, mm -hmm. we, if as an industry, you can deliver like actual value impact to the world, that won't be the case. If you have a technology a product you depend on, it's not going to be not going to matter to the consumer whether it's a bull market or bear market. They're just going to mm -hmm. keep using the product. So uh, we care. You know, we obviously watching the the market cycle. Um, things changes dramatically um, in the bull market. People, more people trying it. That's all great. But it's also about how how do you capture these users so they become lifelong users and not just they only only here for for the for the right uh, mm -hmm. and that's very important for us so you know we, we focus a lot on the, the long term also be aware what the you know kind of near term market condition and what what we need to do to capture the opportunity mm -hmm. um for sure and then uh, related to that um right now there's a, a lot of focus on uh, incentive programs with with tokens. Wondering whether uh, you guys have anything like that uh, with Sui. Like, is there? A, I don't know. A, I don't know if like you you haven't done an airdrop that I know of. I don't know if that, that's something that you're planning or just like a more general uh, incentive program for people who want to earn your token. Yeah, the incentive program is basically a customer for acquiring customer. Every mm -hmm. product. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Web 2 or Web 3. Every product that want to, you know, you know, get going, uh, the, solving the co-star problem is, is common to have some kind of incentive program to acquire customer. Uh, we're working with a lot of different products uh, and services to, to do that, to help them do that. So you may not see a sort of a traditional airdrop um, of SWE, you know, because we're way past mainnet launch anyway. Uh, and it's also a question of how, how sticky that is, um, you know, but we, we definitely have a lot of things going on right now. Uh, if people are paying attention to the three ecosystem, they will see there's a lot of opportunity to, you know, to, to be rewarded for trying out things uh, and that, that we want to point people to. Right. So one hand, we want to remove all the friction for people to jump in and start mm -hmm. playing around with three. Uh, and then we want to incentivize them to stick around or try new things, and they and that becomes part of their life, something they 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 enjoy using and they stick around. Uh, and, and we want to make them lifelong users. So yeah, combination of these uh, these efforts are definitely going on. Okay, so what's the best way to learn about that and like to start getting involved? Uh, well, I mean, go to Sweet Dial, go to follow Sweet um, uh, Network on Twitter. Um, just, you know, there are plenty of content, pl plenty of information out there about Sweet. Uh, you know, follow people who are being Sweet OGs for a while. They, they are talking about their products, right? If you're interested in DeFi, you can talk about use uh, Scallop, you can use uh, Turbos, you can use Navi, you can use Bucket, all these different protocols. Uh, if you're interested in gaming, we have like 80 some gaming in the pipeline. Uh, all of them are launching, a lot of them are launching pretty soon. Some are very, very well-known IPs as well. Love to see people kind of try them. Uh, uh, we also have already have Run Legend. We have Arcade Champions, a lot of uh, Cosmo. Uh, there's an Animal Crossing game. I forgot the name, exact name, Cosmo something. Uh, Topian or, or something, right? These these are game either in in beta, a Panzer, uh, you know, they're, they're they're games, right? So sorry, I I can't remember the exact name. Uh, but you know, if you go to to follow us on the social media and on the, our website, you can discover these um these application. We we believe that's the best way to get to get understanding your suite. Or you want to buy fuddies, right? They said uh, the NFTs. Uh, that's another way to interact with the the community as well. Lots and lots of opportunities. Would you want there to be a focus of you know a specific use case on on, on Sui? Do, do you see any specific use case 
having a competitive advantage on on SUI rather than another mm. another. No, I think we have uh, technical and product uh, competitive uh, advantages over across all the you know different product categories. Um, you know, DeFi happened to be the first one to get to that point of product market fit uh, because it's you know just a fast iteration uh, mm -hmm. kind of a space. Uh, but we we're pretty sure like gaming is gonna take off big time in Sui ecosystem like any point now as the games start to launch, uh, NFTs and social media type application deep in, that's something that's very concrete that a lot of people benefit from. You know, we have several projects launching, all that are coming to Sweet because we want to build something better than what they can build on other platforms. So uh, it's not one particular area. And to be, you know, and we believe there's going to be new product categories that people have, maybe a combination of all these different elements or maybe just something we have never anticipated that will they will come up. Uh, yeah, and, and ultimately that's that's what we mean. This is a developer platform and the developers are the ones, the, you know, the ones we care a lot about, right? Because we want to empower them to build great products uh, to for consumers. That That's a way to go. Um, so, so we, you know, we, we, we are very confident that that's going to happen on street. Interested in your just broader view on what the future blockchain ecosystem will look like and what Sui's role is there. Like, do you, do you see a future where there's dozens of chains and they're all, you know, interoperable with, with bridges, or do you see a future where it's like a handful of chains will end up capturing most of, of the use cases or will there be a single chain? Um, uh, yeah. Like what's, what's your view there? Yeah, I think, I think, um, it's a good question. Uh, nobody really know for sure. And what we believe in is growing the overall size of the pie and not worry too much about, you know, the, the small slice that currently exists, right? Because it's so early. Uh, obviously, there, there's a lot of, you know, China chains are built to be interoperable and bridge, you know, have bridges between them. Um, you know, EVN chains are one example of those. Um, some of them are going to be more competitive compatible with others. Some are not really that compatible, whether that becomes one big ecosystem or becomes a fragment uh, lots of different fragment ecosystems is somehow uh, interoperable or not. It's not clear because but fragmentation is going to make things, the user experience much worse. And, and you know, liquidity uh, also going to be fragmented. It's not good as well. So uh, we believe, you know, power laws always play a role and there will be a few dominant ecosystems. Uh, exactly what that number is and what they look like. Too early to tell, to be honest. Nobody really know. What we do believe is given in a way like we have second mover advantage, we build SUI, you know, after learning about all the limitations of everything else, we're quite confident in our technology, in our product, in the differentiation. And we are already seeing the different kind of product, better products. We believe we will be one of the biggest one, uh, if not the dominant one. How long that will take when that becomes, you know, reality? Hard to say. We've we'll got to do our job. Uh, we are working with so many of our developers to empower them. Uh, but that, uh, yeah, I, I think I think we'll be around uh, for a long time. Um, you know, it's not possible for hundreds or thousands of ecosystems all prosper. Uh, will be a relatively small number. Uh, exactly how, what that number is, nobody really know at this point. Makes sense. And then finally, to wrap up, um, what are the next milestones for Sui? Like, what should we be looking forward to? Well, I mean, uh, in April 10th and 11th in Paris, we have a Sui base camp. Uh, so, where if you want to get the alpha, the latest of our Sui uh, our evolution of the chain, uh, we, we're going to talk about a lot of very, very exciting product launch, feature launches. Uh, we, you know, that that's where you're going to get see the all the things that. You know, they, they we on, only hinting about uh, mm -hmm. right now. Uh, so, so that's the next 
major, major milestone. Over the next few days and weeks, there will be lots and lots of very exciting product announcements and partnership announcements uh, following along. Uh, some of them will actually prove to the world that yes, blockchain can do that. Uh, hmm. The things that people have been sort of dreaming about, hinting about will show actual you know, proof of concept or actual products that show that's possible, uh, oftentimes with partners. So it's not one major milestone, it's a continuous set of milestones. Can you give us a hint of one of those products that are like, wow, blockchain can do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think people have been thinking about traditional trading in like stock exchanges and whatnot. And, and you know, can blockchain do something about it? Uh, stay tuned. Yeah. Ah, interesting. For All example, right. Well, we'll definitely cover that on the Defiant. Um, and Evan, this was great. I really appreciate you taking the time. Super interesting chat. Uh, and really glad we got to dive uh, deep in, in Sui. Super, you know, great stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you, Camilla. <laughs>